Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm watching TikToks until I find the world's worst mother-in-law. We could be here a while. Sending a dirty text to my husband in front of our family trend. Okay, I've never heard of this trend, but I guess let's give it a go. I was like, did you guys stop me? Because I can't stop myself. And he had no like, idea. Cannot, wait, wait, no. I was like, I really can't because if you don't stop me. No. Oh no, that's, oh no, not for you. Not for you. Did you read that? Realistically, how are we supposed to react when our son gets a dirty text in front of us? High five. I feel like this isn't as bad. Also, I'm sorry, sir, we should be making it so that only we can read our texts that are on the screen. It shouldn't be that easy to read your texts. So there's your first problem. I don't know. I don't necessarily feel like this is as bad, but we're just getting started, baby. We're just getting started. Some people are a little more reserved. Even though it's like, we have children. What do you expect is happening? I don't even know her and I don't like her to each their own. I don't think it's that bad. And that's on not having the message preview show up on the lock screen, period. <laughs> this could have been avoided. If she's upset that you and your husband are into each other, then that's a her problem. Yeah, but I think she just wishes she didn't see that. It's kind of like when you find out like your brother is like having relations and you find that out and it's like, mm, I just think mm, she's a family member. Like how is she supposed to act? Like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, get it. Of course. No, that would be weirder. <laughs> Some people are saying she knew damn well that wasn't her phone. Could be, in which case she's nosy, but I digress. Not so bad, but guys, we're just getting started. Hey, uh, you said that you're due on March 13th, right? Yep, that's right. Why? Okay, good. I was looking at flights online. I know it's best to book in advance, uh, save a little money. So do you think uh, around mid-May would be a good time for us to take the baby upstate? I'm sorry, who- wh What? Who wants to take the baby where? What? What do you mean? Oh, I must have not mentioned it. I, I thought I mentioned it sooner. Um, me and your father-in-law, we we're, we're planning on taking the baby upstate to meet all the relatives. Oh, not no! I think mid-May would be a good time. It'll be warm. No. That's not really something you mentioned. That would be something that you ask and then plan for. <laughs> Period. Um, no one's taking the baby anywhere. I mean, <laughs> mid-May, she'll be, what, two and a half months old? I've never had to ask about any of my other grandbabies. It's kind of a tradition in our family. No one's ever had an issue with it. Well, there is an issue okay, now. That's great. Um, but we're talking about me and my baby here, not anybody else. And I'm not comfortable with that. What's the issue? The baby deserves to meet their relatives. I mean, do you not trust us? It's not a matter of trust at all. It's a matter of comfort and necessity. I mean, it's not necessary for my two month old baby to go with her grandparents to go meet estranged relatives. <laughs> no, we won't be doing that. I'm sorry. Well, I'll just have to take it up with my son then because that's just a bit ridiculous. Uh... That's fine. You take it up with your son. You can take it up with the president. You can take it up with Jesus. But at the end of the day, my baby, two month old baby is not going on a trip upstate without me. She's not even asking, that's the thing, she's telling. Why is this a trip that we're planning without the baby's mother? Why is it that the mother is not being included in these plans? It's a tradition. That's freaking weird, man, you weird. The baby deserves to meet the relatives. The baby doesn't care. The baby does not know anything at that point. You know nothing, Jon Snow. She's two months old, okay? All she knows how to do is shit and eat. Same girl. And even that, she has no control over when she shits. Same girl. She sure as hell isn't going to remember. This is about the mother-in-law showing off the baby that isn't hers. As if the baby's going to know who everyone is. Imagine that, a two-month-old baby. Yes, hello, nice to meet you. The baby's gonna hate that. You take the baby away from its mom when it's two months old, it's going to hate it. Here's a good point. If the relatives haven't met me after the time I've been with my husband, why are they entitled to meet the baby? They are strangers to us, literally. Why is it that these relatives, you've never met them before and now suddenly your mother-in-law wants the baby to meet them and not you? That's odd. All right, I'm gonna give this mother-in-law a seven out of 10 psychotic. She's pretty delulu, but I think we can do worse.
Hi, we're starting a new series called Have You Ever? Have You Ever needed to pick up your mother-in-law from the airport? And there's been no communication between me and said Mill about when she's coming into the airport, except for a text message you received like almost a month ago that was like coming in December 1st, 11.15 a.m. Burbank. Getting and waiting and waiting until it is now 12.15. We've been there an hour and there's no mother-in-law. Burbank Airport is a small airport for those of you that don't live in California. You are in your car with your baby in the back seat. Because the whole reason you're picking up your mother-in-law and not your husband is because your husband is sick as a dog. Is that you're going to the airport to pick up your mother-in-law to take her all the way to Palm Springs. Is she going to Palm Springs? Well, that's because her Christmas gift to the family was to come and get a Verbo in Palm Springs so that she would be just far enough away that it is inconvenient. That's a whole nother story. So it's been an hour. You're waiting. You keep circling. It's not a big circle. You've circled maybe, I don't know, 22 times. So finally, you pull over and you're like, I'm actually worried. This is an older woman. Where the f is she? Pe so yeah, up yeah, to period. Officers that are doing nothing because this is Burbank Airport. There is nothing to do there. And you're like, my mother in law, blah, 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 blah. And you tell them the story and they're like, that's concerning. We're going to go look for her. You stay right here. And they tell me not to move my car. Which Everyone's mad. Security guard's mad. But, but you're like, the cop told me to stay here. So they're like, all right, I guess you stay there. You stay there. You wait. The cops come back and they're like, we looked everywhere. We stopped every older lady. We need a picture of her. What's her name? And then they get all this information and then they scamper off again. They're like, do not move. <laughs> there are four cops and they have her picture and they're going everywhere and they have the, the loudspeaker is saying her name over it saying where is she where is she everyone is freaking out this has now been going on for a half an hour security guards are yelling at cops the cop is like her mother-in-law is probably dead don't make her move her car and the security guard's like he, she needs to move her car and I'm like oh my god and my baby is crying and I can't get Miss Rachel on because I'm using my phone <laughs> they check the manifest her name's on the manifest but did she get on the plane they don't know because everyone from that airline is on a lunch break so now we're convinced that she's been kidnapped they go to look in the restrooms they get some women involved now it's been an hour and 20 minutes the cops come back and they're like seriously she's nowhere are you sure that she was flying to los angeles and i'm like yes yeah, she told me she talked to my husband he's sick that's why i'm here i can't oh my, i'm actually really concerned then i call her boyfriend in the middle of the night she changed her flight to palm springs since her son was sick didn't think to tell me she was not there that's what um the funding of the police paid for that day. I'm just gonna say, she's an older woman. Like, I feel like that was like a mistake. Obviously she should have told you that she changed her flight, but maybe the synapses were not connecting properly. I don't feel like necessarily like this was deliberate. Maybe it was. Cause like at the end of the day, she also has to get picked up from the airport, right? So like, why would she purposefully not tell you where to come pick her up? For fun. I feel like maybe that was a boo-boo, just like a big boo-boo. That would be the absolute last time I arranged to meet her anywhere, never again, not ever, yes. I would agree with that. I would be like, dude, if you can't like communicate these things to me, you're on your own. I wanna know what her excuse was for not saying anything. It literally took her three days to apologize. I mean, she did apologize. This is not so bad. We can do so much worse than this. This is dumb and a waste of your time. And you probably won't go pick her up anywhere ever again. But it's not the worst I've heard. This is like a six out of 10 for me. Six out of 10. My husband, before we were together, obviously he dated someone for like four to five years. I've never met her, so she could be really cool, sweet, whatever. Um, but obviously she was around for like four to five years, really close to the family. Um, they still post pictures of her on her birthday on Facebook and say happy birthday. They never did that for me, but you know, good for you. Ooh, that's gonna be a yikes for me, dog. So my sister-in-law, she was pregnant, she was having a baby shower, and she was very close to that ex-girlfriend. Like, they were best friends for all that time. And she invited her. And I was already like, eh, about going anyway, because I wasn't super close with my sister-in-law. My husband had six siblings, so it's not like I was super close with all of them. So I was already like, eh. And then I found out that the ex was coming, and I was like, okay, this is about to be very uncomfortable for me. I told my husband, I said, this is a very uncomfortable situation for me. I don't want to not go and look petty. Like, oh, if she's going, then I'm not going. And so he suggested, hey, why don't you just go? You're there for like 20, 30 minutes. Then I'll call you and say, hey, like I need you. And then we can go on a date. Good and plan, a good plan. And, whatever, and then you don't have to be stuck around everybody. Love this. And I was like, that is perfect. Love that. that. And I had initially talked to my mother-in-law too, being like, you understand that this is a very, like awkward situation for me. She was like, oh yeah, like this, it's not gonna be a problem, I promise. We got you. Obviously, it's the day of the baby shower. I go, she is there, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-laws are there. It's fine, you know, everything is fine. It's a little awkward, but whatever. I'm trying to just like move past it. My sister-in-law goes to open her presents. So everybody takes a seat. So I think, oh, my mother and sister-in-laws are over there. I will sit by them, because those are the people that I know. Take a seat. My mother-in-law turns to me and goes, 
I'm sorry. This seat is for her. Ah! Okay. So I didn't have a seat because they saved a seat for my husband's ex-girlfriend, but not for me. So I had to stand and watch. So I call my husband. I'm fuming. I'm like, this is what just happened. I need you to come get me. This is completely ridiculous. He tells me, actually, we're not going to be able to do that today because um, I am on my way up to my friend's house in the city. So I'm like an hour away. Wait. And I also have the only house key, so you're kind of stuck there. You can't go home. Go to a coffee shop. Get out of yeah. there. Go to see a movie, so man. Fun. So I'm stuck at this baby shower. Can't even go home afterwards because my husband took the only house key. And he lost the other one, so that's why we only have one. And Break then later in. on, he's like, why are you so mad at me? Like, I was going to my friend's house. And I was like, do you not remember that you're supposed to save me from this very awkward interaction and he's like it's fine like get over it get over it get over it. it get over it has the same energy as just calm down if you want me to calm down the last thing that you should be saying to me is calm down and if you want me to get over it the last thing that you should be saying to me is get over it. it's quite counterintuitive oh no absolutely not hate them all okay see this is what i mean like this was a deliberate bullying exclusion you showed up knowing that it would be uncomfortable they should know that that's an uncomfortable situation for you and therefore there should be an effort to sort of make you feel less excluded that's how i feel about people in those situations who feel excluded. I like gravitate toward them and I try to make them feel like they have like an ally, so to speak. And if your family members are not your allies, girl, she's an eight out of 10. And also I don't like your husband. <laughs> All of them, including the husband, need to go. Yeah, like your husband isn't even your ally in this situation. Your in-laws are simply cruel, but your husband, your husband has zero respect for you, my dear. I second that. You set yourself up for a lifetime of stress by marrying a man who will not, cannot stand up to his family and defend his wife. They aren't together anymore. Not for the last year, she said in her other video. Good. I mean, sorrows, sorrows, prayers, had blah, blah, blah. No, no, this is a good thing. And guess what? I think that that was the point of all of that treatment in the first place. They wanted to get rid of you. And make you feel like you weren't welcome. Guess they won, but then again, so did you, so. She's an eight out of 10 for me. Eight out of 10 on the Quack. scale. <laughs> so to give you a little backstory, oh, so my husband was previously married. His ex-wife, let's just say, was not a good person. So eventually they got divorced and when he was going through that entire process, that's when I met my husband. My now mother-in-law, never liked the ex-wife. No one liked her. They were never close, but we were together a couple of months and he wanted to go back to his hometown and he wanted to take me to meet his family. I was super, super excited. And so I knew it was his mom's birthday week. So I took my own money and I spent over a hundred dollars just on gifts for her. And I was super, super excited to meet her. After giving her all of those gifts, meeting her, talking to her, being nothing but kind and respectful, she tells me that I'm going to be a terrible wife and a terrible mother because of the career path that I'm choosing, which is the same career path as her son. And she also sat both of us down at a table and said, he's never going to love you. You're just a rebound. And you guys aren't going to last. This I just met you. <laughs> like, what, like, what do you, Ooh. where, where are you getting all of this from, you know? And of course my now husband said something to her and he was like, whoa, 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 like. Good, mm -mm. good. I could go on for days about things that this woman has done that has been just petty and disrespectful and rude when I'm nothing but nice and, you know, kind and respectful towards her. But that was definitely a great first impression she made on me. That's what's up. Why is it always about making a good impression on the mother-in-law or the boyfriend's mom or the girlfriend's mom and dad and stuff like that? They also have to make a good impression on you. But no one really talks about that. Also, side note, like, oh my God, you are like the prettiest girl I've ever seen ever. You look like a fairy. That mother-in-law, I would say nine out of 10 on the messed up scale. We're venturing into horrible person territory, possessive of their son, territory. We're not venturing into like committed crime territory yet. I feel like that's like the worst you could possibly be as a mother-in-law, but I digress. Let's keep going. I had 13 bridesmaids. Whoa. My wedding got moved up 
like three months last minute and I had to find a bridesmaid dress that would fit everybody and be delivered super fast and would be affordable. So I found the best dress I could find. It was like $200. It could get to people quickly. They could get it, you know, adjusted for their body type. And that's what I ordered. Well, it turns out her daughter, the dress didn't look good on her daughter. It didn't fit her right. This was suddenly known as my fault. And I was a terrible person. I was cruel. And I somehow did this on purpose. I heard multiple complaints about this. My um, soon-to-be father-in-law, ex-father-in-law, even called me and cursed me out the day before my wedding, telling me how cruel I was. Because once again, their daughter needed to look good at my wedding, and anything that I did that might not be perfect for her was a big problem. So I uh, was like, okay, well, uh, I'm sorry. This wasn't intentional. This was a, a big mistake, and, and you know, I know she's going to look beautiful no matter what. So then the next thing was that uh, she didn't feel comfortable getting ready with all the girls because, you know, she didn't like the dress and it wasn't going to look right on her and just all of this. So I was like, okay, well, she could get ready with, you know, the guys or at your house and get ready with you and hang out and maybe that will feel better for her. You know, it's her brother. They can spend some time together. And this was also terrible for me to suggest. It then became something that this woman my ex-mother-in-law, monster-in-law, would bring up to me over and over and over again about how cruel and terrible I was, how I could suggest that her daughter get ready with the guys, how I could possibly treat her like that. Well, what was she expecting her to she do then? She felt uncomfortable, and I, I was trying to find a way to help her feel comfortable. Also, I had 12 other brides. Period. I was not friends with this girl. <laughs> I did not know her really at all. She was just my soon-to-be sister-in-law, and I was trying to accommodate everybody and enjoy my own Literally. wedding. Literally. So they were making a scene about this the day before they made a scene about this at the wedding that ended with all of us crying together in the bridal suite because of his dad and his mom's cruel behavior cussing me out rude speeches everything all because I didn't choose the right dress that would accommodate their daughter enough you would think that it was their daughter that was getting married be freaking for real why are you inventing problems for no reason and so what she doesn't look like a 10 out of 10 in a bridesmaid's dress you're not supposed to look like a 10 out of 10 the only person that's supposed to look like a 10 out of 10 is the bride big fucking deal this is not cotillion this is somebody else's wedding Oh, my beauty light. The beauty light. Oh no, it's gone. Oh no, oh no, now I'm ugly. That was literally just the beginning, the beginning of what I would then endure for the next eight and a half years. Like, and I would also hear about that constantly for the next eight and a half years. So that was my welcome to the family. So judging by how you're speaking about this, I'm assuming that you and your husband are no longer together. Cause like hearing all of this is like, I'm sorry, why is it that you are responsible for your sister-in-law? Like shouldn't your husband be somehow involved in all of this, making it easier for you? I fail to understand why the sister-in-law needs to look amazing at someone else's wedding and why it's such a big problem if she doesn't. I would have walked away on my wedding day. Creator responds, hindsight, right? We all have to learn things the hard way sometimes. The blessing is my three beautiful kids. Well, that is a blessing in and of itself. Just had to endure eight and a half years of bull to get there. <laughs> this is another nine out of 10. I feel like they're tormenting you on purpose because they want to get rid of you. When people ask what it's like dealing with my in-laws. Oh God, I'm already concerned by this first shot here. Oh, oh dear. I gotta take a shot. I gotta take a shot. Let me take a shot. Huh? Huh? Let me take a shot. Let, take a Let, Let her in. She's gotta take a shot. It's me. It's Ray Ray. Oh my god, Nick. You gotta just clean your car out. <laughs> this car is filthy. You need to clean your car out. I smell gas. <laughs> <laughs> I came from my bench. That's my bench. Is she okay? Police are on their way. Police are on their way. Oh. Did you just call? Did you say you called the police? The police are on. Oh. Way. Seems not very concerned. Bye. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that was bizarre. What just happened? The checking if the door is locked, that's a fraction of the actions. I'm sorry, friend. Like, she literally was about to break and enter. <laughs> <laughs> Creator responds, and this is why every door in this place stays triple locked. Okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Just because we're in-laws does not mean you can come into my house and take a sh whenever you want. <laughs> Remember why I said we're venturing into criminal territory? I feel like that's like a 9.5 out of 10. I'm a little unsettled. I'm a little concerned. Makes me want to lock my door, honestly. Subscribe!